into chapter two. We're going to talk about cells for chapter two. Now, we already know this. We've probably discussed it already. And we know that all living things are made of cells. Now, these are living things, not non-living things. We also know that cells are very small. For the most part, you need microscopes in order to look at these cells. A large organism can have millions and millions of cells, and sometimes there's organisms that are made up of only one cell. Now, the cells or the organisms that are made up of only one cell are called unicellular. Examples of these would be bacteria or yeast. Now, we also have organisms that are multicellular, meaning that these organisms are made of, of many cells. Examples of these would be humans or fish or birds or plants. There's a plenty of organisms out there that are multicellular. You probably are more familiar with these types of animals or organisms than you are with unicellular organisms. Now, in order to see cells, we do need to see some, or we do need to use some type of microscope. And there's a couple of them that we're going to talk about today. The first is a light microscope. Now, this is the typical one that we're going to be using in the classroom or ones that perhaps you've already used before. Now, light microscopes use beams of light and glass lenses to magnify specimens. The lenses will bend or refract the light to make the object beneath them appear closer. Now, light microscopes can be used for live specimens. So, for instance, sometimes in class we might be able to view um, paramecium, perhaps euglena, perhaps other things that you can actually see moving around. There are other scopes that use um, kind of like dissection scopes where perhaps you can see something that are a little bit larger and use a microscope to look at them. And those also can be living organisms. Another type of microscope uses beams of electrons to magnify specimens. And these microscopes are called electron microscopes. Now, unlike light microscopes, which uses light to magnify the specimen, electron microscopes uses those electrons. This is done in a vacuum, meaning that there's no air in these particular spaces. And therefore, these cannot be used to study living organisms. So because living organisms require some sort of oxygen or air to breathe, typically um, you cannot use these with living specimens. So we see we, we, a lot of times we use these with bacteria or other non-living organisms are also used with electron microscopes. Now these are usually used because we want to see the fine details. Light microscopes, while they're great at magnifying things, sometimes we do not see the fine details of the objects. So there's two electron microscopes that we're going to discuss. The first one is a scanning electron microscope also known as the SEM. Now these are used for studying the surface of objects and they can produce images that look 3D. So if you take a look at the image right over here, this one that this one, uh, this little arrow is pointing to, this is taken with an SEM, a scanning electron microscope. Now this type of microscope, remember, scans the outside and notice the detail of this particular bacteria. We can notice the, um, the edges of, that of the bacteria. We notice how they sort of connect right here. Um, so this is really good at the surface details. The second type of electron microscope is called a transmission electron microscope, also known as the TEM. Now these are used to study the internal details of the objects. So notice this picture over here to the right, after this little arrow, we can actually see inside the organism. And sometimes this is really good. We want to see the organelles. We want to see up close and personal, kind of what it looks like inside. So um, microscopes, electron microscopes, will use beams of electrons in order to magnify these things. And so we can see the fine details of the objects. But remember, no living specimens can be used inside these electron microscopes. Now, oftentimes we want to see uh, or we want to know what the magnification of the object we're looking at is. 
So a magnification of 10x means that the image of the object appears to be 10 times larger than its actual size. Oftentimes, the, the little ocular lens that's on top of the light microscope is, all, is always going to be 10x. And we can look at that. If you look at the ocular lens, that very top portion, you're going to see that little number. It says 10x. Anything after that number, really, we don't, we're not really interested in in order to, de to, de uh, to determine the magnification. So if you take a look at the magnification on the ocular lenses, it's always going to be 10x. So that means just using the ocular lens, we see the object 10 times larger than it really is. Now, if we're going to look at the objectives, we want to know also the magnification of the objectives. So in this case, we're also going to find that number that has the x right next to it. And in the picture, we also have this magnification on the objective of 10x. So if we were just using the magnification of the objective, we are going to see that it's 10x. Now, if we wanted to determine the total magnification, so the total magnification of this particular object, whatever it is we're looking at, we're going to multiply the ocular lens magnification, which is 10x, and we're going to multiply that with the objective magnification, which is also 10x. So 10 times 10 is equal to 100. So the total magnification for the object we're looking at through this ocular lens and the objective is 100x. That means the object is looking at us 100 times larger than if we were seeing with a naked eye. So a lot of times when we're using light microscopes, we want to know what the total magnification is. Look at your ocular lens, multiply that by your objective, and you're going to get your total magnification.